Rory, just firstly on Raheem Sterling, you're a Chelsea fan. It's a transfer. I remember it happening and thinking, that is an absolute no-brainer. I was so, so excited with Raheem Sterling. I was so excited that Raheem Sterling had signed for Chelsea. I thought he was going to be the difference. I thought he was ready to be the main man. I thought he was ready to take a club by the scruff of the neck, drag the club to victory, sometimes victories that they don't deserve. You know, be that sort of a player. The real talisman of the team. And I think the ability of the player is unquestionable. Raheem Sterling is one of the best players in the Premier League. He has a proven track record. There was a time when Pep Guardiola had access to some of the most mercurial, unpredictable, brilliant players in the league. And every time he'd pick Raheem Sterling, Pep Guardiola in the Champions League final, who's he going to pick? Raheem Sterling. Doesn't matter who else is available. He would always pick him. So when Chelsea signed him, I was, I was so happy. And I would honestly say now, that not necessarily in terms of the overall product, not necessarily in terms of what he's brought to the team. So I don't think he's been quite as bad as some people are making out. Has it been all his fault, do you think? No, it's, it's, certainly, it's certainly not he, been... He was played all over the shop, wasn't he? he was, yeah, he was I mean, Graham Potter had him as a fullback. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just so, totally ridiculous. Whatever position you think Raheem Sterling plays, whatever uh, his skill set is, he's not a fullback. So that's just another example into the incompetency of Graham Potter. But the, the thing with... Raheem Sterling, what I really hoped he would do was, was be our man, the main man. And I think what he's actually, in terms of what I expected, what I believed and what I dreamed he would be, I think the drop-off is one of the worst ever. Like, I think he's, it's comparable to worst maybe... Ever. Well, it's comparable to, say, Fernando Torres. You know when Chelsea signed Fernando Torres? Like, remember, Fernando Torres won the Champions League and the Europa League, scored in the final of the Europa League. It wasn't all as bad as people make out but what I thought he was going to be. My expectation is just a personal thing. It's nothing to do with Sterling. It's nothing to do with Torres. Just what I believed they were going to do, what I hoped they were going to do. It's probably, from, from what they've delivered, compared to what I believe they were going to deliver, it's one of the worst I've known. But I don't think it's over. That's the one thing I would say about Sterling. Well, exactly. You say it's the worst ever, but actually, you know, he's only had one season. It's been a disaster mm. of a season as well, hasn't it? What does his future look like at the club? Because... I think people forget he's only 28 as well. You know, he's, he's in those kind of peak years. Mm. He's got Pochettino coming in. Do you think that he can turn this around? Well, this is it. it like, it hasn't been good. It's been, it's been really poor. And like I said, what I really, what I truly believed he was going to deliver hasn't happened. But a lot of it isn't his fault. I, I don't often talk like that. I'm the, kind of, I'm the kind of person that truly believes people, not only footballers, people need to take responsibility for their own actions. So you know when we start talking about, are they getting the support? Are, are the players around them doing enough? It didn't bother Steven Gerrard when he was dragging Liverpool to a European Cup. You just get on with it. And that's what I want from footballers. However, context is also important. And I think Raheem Sterling in particular is the kind of player that thrives under stability. And he had more managers. I saw a crazy style. He had more managers in one week at Chelsea than he had in seven years at Man City. Wow. That's of course, of course, his performances are a little bit all over the place. Um, he's also been very unlucky with injuries, which hadn't happened at City either. You know, his his record for being available, and that's one of the most important assets you can have as a footballer, being available for your manager. He's been injured a lot. He's been injured an awful lot. So a lot, a lot of things need to change. But stability, belief in a manager, a relationship with a manager, a, a relationship with the fans... Making sure that the support network is there. You know, playing playing for Chelsea and having Cucurella behind you is a thankless task for anyone. So, you know, let's get him linking up with Ben Chilwell as much as possible. And let's make sure that whoever ends up playing is that left number eight behind him, you know, which I think sadly isn't going to be Mason Mount as much as I believe it should be. Let's make our left side, you know, that left channel at Chelsea, let's make that as, as strong as it can possibly be, you know, and try and emulate. If you think about great performances from anyone in his position, it will often be because of the support network. You know, the reason why Thierry Henry was so brilliant would always pull out to the left and run that channel so often is because he had Ashley Cole and Robert Pires over there. Of course, Thierry Henry gets a lot of credit for his own performances, but the support network helps. So let's let's try and give Raheem Sterling everything he needs to thrive at Stamford Bridge.